Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at using Pixie.js and doing sprite sheet animations. Um, and this is going to be a little bit more complicated and it's not the most easiest thing to follow along. I'm going to use a stub of what I did for my uh, keyboard movement tutorial. So if you didn't ha see that or uh, I suggest you look to take a look at that to get that straightened out or you want to grab the source code from there. Uh, but basically the source code uh, I have basically creates a simple, uh, simple at PC application, we put on the stage, ends of the body here, then I created a player, and then set up a window events for key up and key down, created a game loop, and then basically I custom sort of output the keys, but basically I have key up, key down operations to basically uh, move a player character uh, in various directions using the WASD keys here. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to modify it to actually use uh, sprite sheets and basically, uh, you know, uh, um, pixie textures to basically do some animated things. So if you want to take a look at this one here, if we go and start this up, uh, it's just from here, it just kind of does this. All right. And it's all fine and dandy, but it's a, it's a block and it's not that fantastic to, to look at. So we want to modify that. So what I have here is I have an image. It's a little sprite sheet I created. Uh, it's a little Viking character. All right. So he is a little, you know, basically that's a, 12 images so I got three images here for the first walk I say the walk south walk west uh, walk east and walk north okay so those are the animations I have so it's a simple three frame animation for a walk cycle here for this guy now I got this from a humble bundle deal a while ago and they're available on this uh, uh, game dev market.net so I didn't create it from scratch just for simplicity I found these and just kind of cut up the part I wanted and created a simple sprite sheet out of that so that's what we're doing all right so first things first of all I should go and create a couple of variables and begin the process of bringing this in so uh, I'm going to see first thing I'm going to do is Let's create a variable called player sheet. And it's going to be as a JSON object. It's going to contain all the various um, cycles and frames for those cycles uh, that are for my uh, character. All right, so the next thing to do is we want to load it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the app loader uh, for that. We'll do a simple, simply put it, let's see, where should we get rid of the player here? We're not going to use this guy anymore, so we'll get rid of this guy. And so once the, once that's appended, we'll basically do an app. Oops. App dot loader dot add. I'm gonna call this guy a Viking, and he is found in images slash Viking dot PNG. All right. And what we're gonna do then is. We're going to do an app.loader.load, and we're going to basically call the uh, let's see, done loading function after it's all said and done. Okay, so a real simple thing that we're going to do. All right, and now we're going to specify that function. Let's see, over here. Actually, we're going to move this out of the way because we're not because that's going to start the game loop before anything is done, which is not a good idea. Okay, so. We'll do it over here. Function done loading. All right, E. So let's get that thing there. Then we'll set the game loop there. Okay. So actually, we're going to create a function, our own special function here for uh, create player sheet. Okay, and then down here, we'll do the function for that. Okay, so on this here first, we're going to basically now uh, utilize the image that we preloaded. So we'll call this uh, S sheet, for example, and we'll do new pixie dot base texture dot from. And we're going to use the app dot loader, which I used it, or resources. All right. And it's, uh, we call it a Viking. Okay. And inside there, we, um, what I found, we can't use the base texture uh, from the uh, texture resource in there. So let's basically use the URL. Uh, or actually, it's kind of almost like a moot point, but you can always just basically just use uh, um, 
the name uh, the, the, the path to this also works as well because uh, what the preloader did, did anyways it loaded the image into the image cache and this will just immediately pull it a bit and make it available for you to use all right so I know that I specified the sprite to be each cell is 26 pixels by 36 pixels so I so I'm gonna hard code that because I, I know the size so I'll say W equals 26 and H equals 36 okay and I know there's 12 frames okay, so num frames actually equals 12 actually I'm not even sure we're gonna use that um, actually I probably won't even use that so we don't need the number of frames I know there's 12 frames anyway all right, so now what we're going to do is now we have to create the frames for our animations. So so let's start with a player uh, sheet. All right, I'm going to call this one uh, stand south. All right, so that's going to be standing there um, and not doing anything. And so it's going to be an array now. So make another array. All right, and we're going to create a texture for here. So we're going to do a new pixie dot texture and we're going to use the sheet we created and we're going to do a new pixie dot rec rectangle. All right, we're going to specify the location where it is. And now uh, if you look back at the player, the standing animations that are going to be basically the these guys here. So, you know, basically uh, the the, the uh, basically the middle frame is going to be like the standing still because obviously it's arms in one direction, arms in the other direction, so this is going to be the, what we're looking for. Alright, so that's the, the goal. So then for this guy, we will just pick the first one because it starts at a zero, right? So times W, alright, zero for the uh, for the uh, the height there is to start with for the rectangle. And we're going to go down to the width and height. So we're going to create a rectangle that creates our our uh, that creates our square for our texture okay so we're creating that so that's gonna be our standing for our uh, for our south so I'm gonna copy and paste some code just to, just to make this quicker but I'm gonna basically do the same thing for the other ones here so here's my array for standing west okay uh, and then I have one here for I have one for east and uh, for north. And what I want to do is I'm grabbing the, the particular frame, all right, the fourth one in, seventh one tenth. All right, so those are the ones I'm grabbing that are the the, the standing animations, the second frame of each of those three step uh, ones for standing animations, or well, well, lack of an animation, but it's just a single frame. That's what I'm going to be using for. Well, I guess where you say it's idle animation, right? So that's those are those. Now the more interesting ones is we want to do uh, walking ones, right? So we'll say player sheet uh, walk south. I'll start with that one first, okay? And now we specify the frames. Now I know that there's three frames, right? So we use the same technique up here. So a new pixie dot texture. All right, from a sheet. All right, and then we're gonna do a new pixie dot rectangle. All right, and we're gonna basically use the, uh, the f starting from zero times w, right, comma zero comma w comma h. So that's a rectangle. Now we're gonna basically copy and paste this for the next one. So I know it's the first three frames I want. So we do this, this, and now we specify one and two. Okay. So there we have the first walk south is going to be the first three frames. And we're going to duplicate this one and do the ones for west and east and north. All right, so of course, change the names to the matches to what we want. West, east, and north. Okay, and we change the numbers. All right, we know. Next one is three, four, and five. All right, and then six, seven, and eight, and nine, ten, and eleven. All right. 
So there, so now we created our sprite sheet and it's basically a JSON object with these properties inside it that are also arrays of these textures that make up the frames for our animations, okay? So if we go and save this and take a look at it, not a whole lot happens, but if we bring up the developer tools and we look at uh, player sheet, all right, you'll see that this is what we have. We have our various little objects here, all right? It's an array of one, array of one, but see these ones have three frames. So that's exactly what they are. So they're all uh, textures in this array for our player sheet. All right. So next thing we gotta do is once we created the player sheet, we need to create the character. So we have another function here called create player. All right, so that was the, that created the, the sheet. Now we have to create the player and this will put it on the screen. So we'll go out on the bottom here, we'll make another function here, create player. And so now we sort of create it the same way that we did uh, with any type of sprite that we uh, that's uh, going to be available for us. So we'll say player equals new pixie dot animated sprite. This is different to animated sprite. And now we're going to pass in the player sheet, and we're going to basically use the stand south. All right. So that's going to be create you know basically before we, we've been doing mostly like pixie dot sprite dot from now we're doing pixie dot animated sprite and it's going to be based off of that animation frame uh, that we specified in our create create player player sheet function everything else works the same though we can do you know, anchor dot set 0 0.5 all right and we got the player now here's something new animation speed equals 0.5. I'll make it kind of a short animation. So this is the speed of the animation. Player dot loop equals false. I'm gonna, I don't want it to loop because, um, you know, obviously if you're not holding a key down, you don't want the player to keep animating in a walk cycle when he's standing still. That doesn't look that good. Player dot x equals app dot view dot width divided by two. So I'm putting him in the center of the screen for now. Player dot y equals app dot view dot height divided by two. And then we'll do an app dot stage dot add child player, and then we'll do player not play. Actually, this might not be necessary for this guy because it's only going to animate this, uh, and it's a one frame thing. But you know, uh, this is going to set it up. So now, if I save this and go back to here, there he is. Ta-da! There's the guy, my Viking on the middle of the screen. That's uh, fine and dandy, but it doesn't do anything. If you want to see what it, if you want to see what it does, you can do a uh, say say walk south, and then set the uh, the loop to true, and save that, and then you can see it. Now he's kind of moving pretty quick there. All right, he's animating. So that's what we're doing. So now the the trick will be now is these key functions. All right, the, these guys here. All right. So we need to basically decide which ones, uh, you know, which ones we're going to play out, and you know, based upon the key presses. So that's what we're going to, have to do now. So let's tackle one of these first ones here. We'll just do W, okay? Um, I'm going to set up a a, a, a uh, another variable for the speed. So let speed equals two. All right. So that's going to be what we'll use. Let's go back down here. And here's the W, right? So what we're going to do here then is we're going to say, well, first things first, we'll just kind of show what happens uh, if you just simply do a player dot textures. We're going to swap the textures out now. So when we talk about sprites, you have a texture to them, uh, and we just have to change it out. So instead of loading anything new, we just swap the textures. So you can player sheet uh, dot walk north. Okay, so you can walk upwards, right? And then we're gonna do player dot play. So we're gonna load. So so what we're doing here is we're gonna swap the, the texture for whatever it was before, all right? Either the standing or a different directional. We're gonna change it to the, the walk north, and we're gonna play the animation. And then we're gonna move it like we normally would anyway. And we'll just do speed, all right? So let's take a look what happens now. If we run this, go back to here. You see that? Now what's happening though? Hmm. So the so one issue is that um, it looks like it's, it doesn't look right because it, it sort of like plays, but it kind of is very kind of janky. 
And the reason why is because what's happening is as you, as you press the key, it's going to hit this over and over and over again. And it's going to constantly change the player walk cycle to the north one and constantly try to play it over and over again. Over again. And it never makes it because it's stuck playing the first frame and then being replaced over and over and over again. So we don't want to, pl to keep doing this. We we'll want to play it one time. Even though it's set to, 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 only, to not loop, we have to tell it not to basically play if it's currently playing. So how you can do that is there's a nice little handy attribute for player, and it's called playing. And so while it's not playing, we'll, we'll set its texture and play it. All right. So while if it is playing, we'll skip it. All right. We'll still move the character. But we're, but we're not going to try to swap the texture and play it at the same time if it's already playing. So this is going to, this will, will make it uh, a bit smoother for us. So hit save, and now hit up. You see now it's playing the animation. So if I just move it back down, see now it's kind of flipping around and he's kind of doing his thing. It looks a lot better. And so now we can replicate this uh, for the other directionals. So we'll just copy and paste these. So we'll copy this one. And so A is going west. So we'll paste this change this to speed all right and then we're going to basically do the same thing and now we're going to walk west all right then we'll go back to this one here for this s is for first south right so i'm going to say walk south now all right and change this to speed and lastly uh it's going to go east so walk east I'll play that, change that to speed. Whoops, too many selections there. Okay, so now if I save this and then go back to look at it now, now I can see that I have my little walking animation. And it plays. And so once I let go, the animation finishes and he just kind of stops. So, so that's how you kind of do a sprite sheet animation for the different directionals that you're using the little keyboard command here that uh, there's a little keyboard control for this guy so all right so let's quickly go over it once more time so that we all understand what's going on here um, we basically used the loader to load our texture our, our image and once it's done we, we call it done loading function which then basically sets up our player sheet create the player and then sets up our, our animation, uh, our game loop. All right. And if you look at the player sheet here, we create a base texture from that, that, uh, that resource, the URL, uh, using that URL to basically get the base texture from it. So it loads it into S sheet. I know that the width and height of each cell is 26 by 36. And I create a player sheet with uh, various different named uh, attributes that are additional arrays of textures and these are the frames of the animation so the standing ones are real simple single frame ones the walks are three each lab labeled each way for the different directions all right using different frame numbers to create rectangles uh, for each of the of the animation frames then once that was done we create the player like we normally create so instead of using sprite from we're creating an animated sprite and we're already passing in the player sheets stand south for that single frame to start off with, okay, and we everything else is treated the same. We have set the anchor point, we have the animation speed, okay, and then we set the loop to fall so it doesn't constantly play. Position the character, add it to the stage like normal, and we play. And then the last thing we did was on the on the key commands for the like the was D here. We basically ensure that the player is not animating currently, and if it's not animating, then we set the texture to the proper one and play the animation. All right, and then we move it like normal. Otherwise, if it is playing, we don't bother because then that, that prevents the animation from getting overwritten and getting stuck in a, in a certain phase. So this kind of prevents that from happening. All right, so I right, so hope you find that useful. Uh, th th this should hopefully help you uh, work on whatever little game project you have. And if you have any questions or you find a better way of dealing with uh, this animation stuff, you know, please feel free to leave a comment below.